Well, good morning and welcome. It's good to see you. We're glad that you've been, that you're with us today visiting here in the auditorium. Those of you visiting by way of the internet, thank you for being with us. Stand if you would together. Let's sing the wonderful song that says, I serve a risen Savior. He lives. One more time. Oh, hang on. That's tonight. We're going to start with that, sir, that with that song tonight. I apologize for that. That one's on me. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to sing another whole other song. It says, I have a new name written down in glory. Thank you. <laughs> Story, a sinner has come home. Oh, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, evermore to In the book, tis written, saved by grace. Oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the word I am made whole. Oh, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white robe to sing the story. A singer has come home. Forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. Thank you, Brother Mark, for getting on the right song. Appreciate that very much. We're glad you're here today, and we hope that you receive a blessing from being here. And um, we're just glad that you're here. We love it and appreciate it you taking this time to come and be a part of the, our worship service at Forest Home. And we want to take a few moments and uh, get out of our comfort zone and go tell some other folks we're glad to see them. Brother James is going to play some enlightening music. Let's move quickly and go tell somebody we're glad to see them. This morning, uh, we are going to have baptism. Uh, Tanner Kopp has come uh, forward as a candidate for baptism. Uh, 
he, he came forward and he said, you know, I've been baptized before, but, you know, I was younger in my life and, and you know, I, I didn't have some things figured out. And, I, and now I know in my heart that I'm ready to follow Christ with my life and leave my old life behind. Amen. And, and walk with Christ Jesus. And so uh, we celebrate uh, his baptism today. And I thank you all for being here to take part of it. Tanner, have you accepted Christ as Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And upon your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. Uh, I want to start off by thanking those who brought candy for our trunk or treat that happened this Friday. Uh, we did kind of call an audible right before trunk or treat and did a drive-through candy parade, and it worked out uh, tremendously. We, I, there's no, we have no idea how many came. There were a lot, but if you brought candy or if you helped out with passing out candy, thank you so much for doing that. Wade was our official counter. I'll tell you this. We were about 20 minutes into it, and it was a constant cars coming through. And I was like, man, we're doing great. Walked over to Wade and said, Wade, how many we got? He's uh, nine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> we, have, we have no clue how many we had. But there was a lot. And thank you, Wade, for counting. Um, <laughs> today, at 4 p.m., uh, Bible drill will be going on first through fifth grade. If you are first through third, you'll be over in the children's building upstairs. Fourth through fifth grade, you will be in the choir room behind here. Um, and also at five o'clock, team kid and preschool choir will be going on over in the children's building. Uh, because of the special service this evening, Family Focus, we will not be meeting over in the adult building. We'll be in here with all of the adults. So please remember that. Be here at five o'clock. And then this Tuesday, we are going to be set up downtown. Uh, they have their, uh, their parade, their candy parade. I don't know what they call it. Uh, for the kids here in Kilgore on Halloween evening at 4 o'clock. We're going to have two booths um, for Forest Home. One will be a booth for Kids Life. One will be a booth for the drive through Nativity. If you want to help out, please come to me and I can get you set up. We are going to need help from 2.30 till about 6 o'clock is when they're done. Um, so if you can help out with that with either one of the booths, whether it's Kids Life or drive through Nativity, please come see me and I will get you plugged into it. Thank you, Brother Pat. We had 218 in Sunday school this morning. That's great. We praise the Lord for that. Uh, also, today is the final day for your shoe boxes to be in. Uh, if you hadn't brought them today, bring them tonight. And uh, we need to get those processed and everything. So get those shoe boxes in as soon as possible. Also, there's going to be a Women's Day of Prayer. There is a little flyer in the bulletin that you have with you today. It tells all the details about uh, that day of prayer, and they're doing a very special mission project. So uh, if you can help them out with that, they would appreciate that. Uh, also, next Sunday, uh, November the 5th, is deacons meeting at 4 o'clock for all you deacons. And then uh, also tonight, tomorrow night, there'll be a long-range planning committee uh, meeting along with a building and grounds tomorrow night at 6.30 to a reminder to those two committees. And then uh, Brother Brad Clark has an announcement for us. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? I hope you're doing well, and I hope here just as soon as you can, you in your heart start praying for the Holy Spirit to be in here to bless Brother Riley as he brings you our message. I got two short announcements. One is on the flag. I just had some more money given to me this morning. We owe less than probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 on a $12,000 flag. So we are there. I will also let you know I talked to the, uh, the uh, company that's going to install the crosses in for the flag, which means they're working on our order. They will be building our flagpole to our specifications, and hopefully here shortly we'll have it put in the ground, which is going to be a pretty uh, major project the way this is installed. But give you an update on that. The other thing I have is all veterans and your spouses uh, November the 10th at 6 p.m. at McKay's, we're having a dinner in honor of you. It has been paid for. So veterans, spouses, and or surviving spouses, 
We will have dinner at McKay's at 6 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet inside the Welcome Center. I need to know a count. I think last time we had right at 50 people. So we hope to have that many or more. If you are a veteran, surviving spouse, please come to this. We want to honor you for your service and commitment to the uh, country. And I think that's about it. If you have any questions about the dinner or about the flag, please contact me. Thank you very much. God bless. We do have several visitors with us today. One very special sitting in the back is my dear friend, Mr. Mark Lassiter. Brother Mark is back in the back. He served at Highland Park here for many, many years, has been in many churches in our East Texas area. We sing together. Many of you have heard us together with our little Kilgore Quartet. Uh, Mark's been my friend for more years than we want to we want to mention. Mark, we're glad that you're here. Thanks for, for being with us today. And the other visitors, we're glad that you're here. We will be having a very special service tonight following our, at 5 o'clock for, for everyone, an informational service and a worship service here in our auditorium. So everybody will be here at 5 o'clock. We encourage you to be back for that, for that time of worship uh, and some information we need to share with the church. Finally, too, this is what I call the Arendelle Announcements. Both of them happen to deal with the Arendels. As you know, we have moved up our Joymakers meeting from the 14th, which is the day before our church-wide Thanksgiving dinner, and I would not do that to Miss Marty, to move up to the 7th. And so our Joymakers will meet on, on Tuesday the 7th. We still need about three people to make dressing. We'll be having ham and dressing. Need a big pan of dressing for that. If you can help us with that, if you would see Clyde Arendel, and he will take care of that and get that name down. Many of you have asked me today, information about the shoe boxes and what to fill out and what to put in the cards and everything. Thank you for thinking that I know that, but I don't. And so Miss Norma here, who's wandered up behind me, uh, is the person to, to visit with. Yes. So go ahead. And we only need one dressing. We need one dressing. See, that's how it goes. One person. There have been some questions about the envelopes, the brochures that are in the shoe boxes. Um, the boy girl labels need to be cut out and, and marked and taped on top of the box. The money, the $10, if you want to contribute, is a little envelope that you tear out of that brochure is perforated. And they've asked us to put our $10 in that envelope on that brochure, put it in the top of the box, and do not seal it. It's very difficult when it gets to the processing center in Dallas for them to get into those, <clears throat> excuse me, envelopes to get the money out. And so that's how you do it. I noticed in our boxes on the Welcome Center table, there are many brochures just stuck under the rubber bands. Um, I am very willing to take care of those, but any that have not come in yet, please read the brochure, cut out your boy girl label, tape it on top, put your money in the top of the box and you'll be good to go. Thanks church. You're, you are now all Operation Christmas Box experts, and you know how to do that. Thank you for your, what you do for that church. We thank you for giving to that wonderful ministry. Let's continue to sing together now. Begin hymn 603. It says, when we all get to heaven, we're going to sing, and we'll shout the victory. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his in the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and Trusting, serving every day Just one glimpse of Him in glory Will the toils of life repay When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing Hey James, James, tear up one, go I 
on and sing now. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be old. Sing those pearly gates. Hello. I'm just like you in so many ways I've had my share of tears I've had my share of rainy days Yeah, there have been ups and downs And the seasons turn But through it all The greatest lesson that I have learned Is to just let God be God on the little days, and He'll be God on the bigger days. Why do we wait till things go wrong? We could have Him by our side all along. Let God be God. The best of times and he'll be God through the worst of times when you need God to move in mighty ways when you need God to be there on the bigger days pray on the little days It's more than a book sitting on the table. God can change your life. He's willing and he's able. Oh, but we keep him small. Then we stay the same. We could change our world by calling on his name. Let God be God on the little days. He'll be God on the bigger days. Why do we wait till things go wrong? We could have Him by our side all along. Let God be God. Best of times, and he'll be God in the worst of times when you need God to move in mighty ways, when you need God to be there on the bigger days, pray on the little days. little days on the bigger days why do we wait till things go wrong he's been standing by our side all along let God be God in the best of times in the worst of times why do we pray to move in mighty ways when you need God 
to be there on the bigger days. Pray on the little days. Pray on the little days. Let God be God. Church, if you could grasp that concept, to let God be God on the little days. Not just wait. Let him walk beside you all the time. Scott, thank you so much. What a, what a great and wonderful song. Uh, as we continue to sing together, I had picked songs about heaven. I didn't know he was going to sing that. I would have put him right before the message. Uh, and Riley, could, he would preach like Billy Graham after that message. Uh, let's sing together. It says, one of these days I'm going to fly away. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll find a way to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, fly. Oh, what a day, a glory. 
day that will be. What a glorious day today is just to be in the house of the Lord. We have an opportunity to be a part of our tithes and offerings, to give back to the Lord uh, just a portion of what he has given to us. Uh, Willard's going to leave us in prayer today. Willard. Father, thank you for this wonderful Lord's day and the opportunity to come in your house. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for Brother Raleigh and our staff and each and every member and he asks that you bless those that are sick and on our prayer list those in the nursing homes and that all need your healing touch and your comfort lord we pray for our nation and our service people that you'd keep us all safe and that you would bless our leaders of our country and guide them give them wisdom lord we ask that you bless this offering the gift and the giver Use it, magnify it for your honor and your glory. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you, James. There was an aeration in an Easter musical back in the early 80s that said, centered in the majestic gallery of time stands the portrait of a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Scripture tells us that only through the, through the blood is there remission of sin.
Thank you so much, choir. Thank you. If you have your Bibles today, let me share some scripture with you, please. You follow me, if you would, please, to the first one. will be in James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Find that in your Bibles, if you would, please. We're doing a series on Sunday morning entitled God's Toolbox. Several weeks ago, we did a series entitled Satan's Toolbox. We looked inside of Satan's toolbox and saw there were some things that he uses against us. Pride was one of those things. Bitterness was one of those things. Several of those messages we shared with you about what Satan uses to destroy the believer. You remember what Jesus said about Satan? He comes only for one reason to kill, to destroy, to steal. It's the only reason he comes. There is no other reason. But I want to bring encouragement to you in these last few days and last few weeks that God has a toolbox as well. And God has tools that he gives to you and to the church that the church may be effective and that the church may be powerful, and that you and I may be effective and powerful in these days in which we live. So far on this series, we've talked about some things in God's toolbox. One was the church. He's given the church to you and I as a gift, a tool that we can use to strengthen ourselves Strengthen one another, encourage one another, edify one another, build up the body of Christ. And we come to this place in times of worship, and we need to hear that song that Scott sang. Pray on the little days, because there are big days as well. He gives us the church. He gave us his word. You have it in your hand in some shape, form, or fashion, the Holy Bible. He gave us his word, his written word. Down through the ages for you and I to use and to meditate upon as Joshua told us to and to use it not on a Sunday or a Wednesday only, but every day of the week to use his word, to look into his word. We also spent two weeks talking about the tool that he gives us in the person of the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, as a tool that you and I can use. He lives within us. Scripture said, do you not know? Do you not understand? Have you not grasped this thought yet that he lives within you in the person of the Holy Spirit as a tool? One thing that we've taught about or said about was that Satan's tools had no rust on them. Well used. And you and I can attest to that that he uses his tools on a regular basis if you go to some toolboxes out here uh, around you'll find tools that are rusty because they're not used that rust grows on them lack of use but Satan's tools are used well used as he is as a roaring lion out to devour whomever he may Sadly, though, maybe God's tools are not so well used. They may have a little bit of rust on them. Do we use and come to church like we should? The tool that he gave us to come together and worship together and to celebrate his resurrection. Do we use his word like we should? Do we open it and study it and meditate on it like we should? 
do we rely upon the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us like we should? Today, I want to share with you another tool out of God's toolbox. You see, you and I are on a journey. We started this journey when we were born again. God's trying to get us from point A to point B in our journey. In Romans chapter 8, we would find if we went to there and we would find exactly where he's trying to get all of us. He's trying to get us to be conformed to the image of Christ. Not that we look like him, but that we think like him. We make decisions like him. That we be conformed. That conformed means there's a change taking place. And that's where he's trying to get us on this journey. We started that journey when we accepted Christ. Where were you when you accepted Christ? How old were you? What happened? How did it happen? Do you remember it? And if you're headed toward that place where God wants to get all of us to be conformed to the image of Christ, where are you on your journey? Out of that toolbox that God has, he gave us a tool out of many. The tool that I make mention of today is the tool faith. It is the tool that you will need to help you get through this journey that you're on to get where to get where God wants you to get it is faith it is a tool that we must use every single day of our life for you see there are the little days there are the little days and then friends there's the big days and we need God to be in the little days as well as in the big days. And it's by faith. By what I read in this book, I think there are trying times ahead of all of us. And it will take faith for you and I to get through those trying times. As a church, there may be trying times ahead of us. And we will need faith to get us through those trying times. But let no one be deceived today. God is on his throne. Regardless of what we see and what we hear and the rattling of all the sabers and the swords and the devil romping through churches and through the lives of people, God is still on the throne. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. And that faith that he has given you is a tool by which you can walk victorious. You see, he never intended in this journey for you to be overcome. He always intended for you to be an overcomer. He never meant for one thing to overcome you and to destroy your life and your joy and your spirit and your peace. He always intended for you to be an overcomer. Faith. In James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, we find these words. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? See, here's the value of faith. What is the value of faith? Just what is faith? Here's a definition for you. To trust in Jesus... As, as it is contained in the gospel, as it is stated in this book, faith is to trust in Jesus. As it is contained in this gospel and what 
the Bible tells us about Jesus Christ. Faith is to trust. Well, let's go one step further. What does the word trust mean? Trust means to rely on the truthfulness of another. The second, the, the second definition of that is to believe that someone is good and honest and will not harm you. Do you believe that about God? Do you believe that about your Jesus? That he is good and honest and he will not harm you? Even though we walk through some difficult times and unbelievable times, he is a God that you can trust and he will not harm you and he is good not just some of the time, but all of the time. And you can trust him. Now think about those two words, faith and trust, and how they work together for all that we face in our life. There is a value of faith. James says, how can you have faith and not works? How does that work? It does not. You see, our faith in Jesus Christ is going to produce good works. It's not that our good works produces faith. It's the other way around. Our faith will create in us a desire to do good works. The value of faith. Go over to 1 John with me. Find that passage in 1 John, chapter 5, verse 4. And let's look at this together. 1 John, chapter 5, verse 4. The value of faith. Faith produces victory over the world. For whatever is born of God, this is 1 John 5, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. What does that world, word world mean? The world order as of today. The world order. Have you looked around lately? There is no world order. We are out of order as a world. But yet here is faith that, over, that can overcome that world. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Faith produces victory over the world. It is by faith that we can have those kind of victories in our life. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, another value of faith is that it serves as a shield against the fiery darts of the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? The wicked one is the devil. And the Bible says that we are to take the shield of faith. And by the shield of faith, we can block the fiery darts of the wicked one. Satan comes at you. He is as a roaring lion out to devour whomever he may. Whoever he may. Whoever he may. Whenever he may. He is out to devour whoever he can. However he can do it. He does not care. And he has fiery darts, temptations that he fires at you and I. And how could we defend ourselves against those fiery darts? It is by faith. It is the shield of faith that serves as a tool that he has given us to defend ourselves against the fiery darts of the wicked one. Let's not be fooled by, any, by anybody or anything. Satan is alive and well. And he is at work upon this planet. 
And if you live on this planet and you breathe and you're breathing air on this planet, you are subject to his fiery darts. Never think that I'm above it. I've grown so much spiritually that I'm above his fiery darts. No, 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 no. That's when you're about to take a fiery dart hit. The value of faith. It overcomes the world. It defends against the evil one. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it is by faith that we what? That we please God. By faith. How did Abraham please God? He lived before Jesus Christ. He lived before the cross. How did Abraham receive righteousness? Without a Savior, without the Christ, without the cross. It says righteousness was imputed to him because of his faith. He had faith in God. And it was imputed to him, given to him as righteousness. It pleased God that Abraham exercised faith. And you want to please God? We all do. One of the best and quickest and easiest way, maybe not the easiest, but the best way to please God is walk by faith. Not understanding what tomorrow may hold, just knowing who holds tomorrow. It's by faith. The value of faith. It pleases God. All of our works. All of our good works, yes, they're important to God, but what pleases God is when we're walking by faith because that means I trust Him. I trust the next step, though I, it's dark and it hurts, and I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. It's by faith, and that pleases God. The virtues of faith. What is a virtue? It's the act of doing what is right and not what is wrong. That's what a virtue is. It's the very act of doing what is right rather than doing what is wrong. We read a few words out of it a moment ago, James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. By faith we have good works. We do what is right. There comes a time in all of our lives when decisions are made, hard decisions, and we have to decide, am I going to decide to do what is right or am I going to decide to do what is wrong? Sometimes we're standing at, at a decision process and, and we've decided here, here's the best way for me. Here's the best way for me. And the best decision for me is to do it this way. Is that what God wants? Is that, is that the right thing to do? You see, you know as well as I do, the right decision is not always the easiest decision. But the right decision about anything in our life is what we need to strive for. It's a virtue of our faith. I'm going to do what's right. It's going to cost me. It's going to hurt me. It's going to put me out. It's going to take up my time. But I'm going to do what is right. My faith is going to make me do what is right. That's a virtue of our faith. To do what is right rather than do what is wrong. And then the virtue of faith is faithfulness. Just being faithful. Getting up, being faithful to God, getting up, being faithful to your church, getting up, being faithful to what the Lord has asked you to do. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, 
Let me hear some Bible. Let me hear some pages turn. Matthew chapter 25. I want you to see this. We're going to have a meeting tonight about information that you need to hear about the church. Your church. My church. Our church. His church. And some of it has to do with faithfulness. Just being faithful. Here's the parable. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, please. Kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. The parable is an earthly story with a spiritual application. Spiritual application is this is the Lord Jesus that's fixing to go on a journey. He's going to return to heaven. And so he entrusted us with some of his stuff. Things on this earth. Tools. Possessions that we have. He's entrusted those, this church. He's entrusted it to you. To us. And one day he, he says in this parable, one day he'll return and he will settle accounts. And so we read on. And he says, Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. His faith caused him to take that what God had given to him and take care of it and reproduce it so he could give more back to the Lord than the Lord gave to him. Now we could read the rest of that parable, but I don't want to beleaguer the time that we're already in. But if you'd read on down, you'd find one servant that took what God gave him and dug a hole and buried it and said, at least I'll have that when the Lord comes back. And the Lord came back and was not pleased with that servant. But to those other servants that took it and blessed it and returned it more to the Lord, he said, well done good and faithful servant. I'm not for sure that there's anything that could be said at a funeral that would be more pleasing for any of us than for Jesus Christ to say to us when we stand before him, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm not for sure all the plaques on the walls and all the ribbons and all the, the other things that we might accomplish in and get together in this world, that's not going to be there at the judgment seat of Christ. But the Bible says our works will be. May you and I, both here on that day, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's stand together. Father, thank you for this time that we've had to look at this tool that you've given us to walk by faith, May we be faithful with it. May we not waste it. May we not spend it on this world. May we not throw it away in the face of, of the things of this world. They will only come and go. But faith abides. 
And Father, help us today to be that faithful person. If there's one in this room today that needs to be saved, Father, may that happen today. Others that might want to join this church by transfer of letter, the statement. Others that want to rededicate their life and begin a new walk of faith, help them to do that today. There's those that need to come and just pray at this altar. Let them come today. Bind Satan from this place that only the Holy Spirit would have a freedom to speak to all of us today about our faith. Thank you for that tool that you've given us. May we use it to honor and glorify you. Forgive us for our many sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark Lee.